We will now discuss ways to edit curves created by using the basic curve command. You can bring up the basic curve editing dialog by double clicking on a line, arc, or circle. This dialog is also accessible from the basic curves command. You can also go to the edit menu and choose curve, then parameters. You can edit a line by clicking the line to move an endpoint. The nearest endpoint to the pick point is controlled. Also, if the parameter option is selected rather than the dragging option, you can edit the line length or angle from the tracking bar at the bottom of the screen. If you're editing in circle or arc, you can also use the parameter option to edit the radius. However, more options are available by choosing the dragging button. Endpoint along the arc. If a point along the arc is picked, it can be used to drag the radius. If the center of the arc is picked, you can move the arc by using the center point as a reference. Editing a circle is much like editing an arc. Picking a point on the circle will drag the diameter, while picking the center point allows you to translate the circle. Picking a control point, which is located at the 3 o'clock position, will allow you to drag the endpoint, essentially turning the circle into an arc. We will now look at commands for trimming and extending curves. You can use bodies, faces, points, curves, edges, datum planes, and datum axes as bounding objects when trimming a curve. However, you cannot trim bodies, sheet bodies, or solid bodies. The trim command can be opened by going to the edit menu and choosing edit, curve, trim. The trim command is fairly complex as it also serves as the extend command. Here's an overview of the trim command in the dialog box. In the trim curve dialog box, you are first prompted to select the object you want to trim. You can use the filter in the dialog box to help you select certain objects. Selecting the single selection box will make the command auto automatically go to bounding objects after one trim object is selected. Unselect this box to, to be able to choose multiple trim objects. You must then select your first bounding object, which will serve as the boundary where the curve will be cut. You can then select your second trim boundary, or if you want only one trim boundary, simply choose OK after the first boundary is selected. For a circle, if only one bounding object is selected, the trim will be will select the point at 3 o'clock as the second point to trim to. For an arc, the second point will be the end point nearest to the pick point. Another way to use trim is to switch the selection steps so that you can choose the bounding objects first. This way, once you choose the, the string you want to be trimmed, the object will be trimmed as soon as you click it. You can also use the trim command to extend objects. If the bounding object is not intersecting the trim object for a line, the endpoint nearest the pick point will extend along the same direction as the original line until it reaches the bounding object selected. You can also extend with two bounding objects, just like you can trim with two bounding objects. For an arc, you can extend along the arc using the same radius and center point as the original arc. The bounding object does not have to intersect the arc path. The arc will extend until it reaches the intersection of an imaginary line following the direction of the chosen bounding object.
The trim command is based on intersections of bounding objects. The default method for finding these intersections is relative to WCS. There are three other methods you can choose to find these intersections, which are shortest 3D distance, distance along a vector, or intersections along a screen normal. If you choose to create intersections along a vector, you'll have one more step before you can do your trim. After you select your trim object and the two bounding objects, you will then need to select the vector direction by using the vector constructor options. There are two commands in the dialog box to modify the bounding objects you use. They are trim bounding objects and reuse bounding objects. Selecting trim bounding objects will trim both of the selected objects and the bounding object to the intersection of interests. The direction of the trim or extend is based on the pick point as in the previous commands. Selecting the reuse bounding objects command keeps the bounding objects selected after a trim has been applied so that you do not have to select them again if you want to trim additional strings using those same bounding objects. There is also a command labeled associative output. This lets you specify that the output trimmed curve is associative. An associative trim results in the creation of a trim curve feature, which is a duplicate associative trimmed copy of the original curve. This will appear as a dashed line on the screen. There are also four options that will allow you to specify what to do with the input curves. For example, you may retain them, make them blank after trimming them, de simply delete them, or replace them with new trim curves. Choosing the option Confirm Upon Reply lets you preview the results of the trim to accept or modify them before applying the command. There is also a trim corner command, which can be accessed through the edit curve menu. When using this command, simply place the cursor over a corner of two or more curves. There must be at least two curves. The corner will then be trimmed on the side where there is a majority of the cursor. Note that you can easily undo this command by choosing the undo option in the dialog box. Another useful command for editing curves is the divide command. This command is located in the edit menu by going to edit, curve, divide. This command has five methods for dividing a curve. The first method allows you to divide the curve into equal segments. For this method, you must first select the curve you wish to divide, then specify the equal parameter or equal arc length. The parameter divides by parameters of a certain kind of curve, while the arc length divides the curve into equal lengths. You must then simply specify the number of segments you wish to divide into. The second method for dividing a curve is to select bounding objects. For this method, you must first select the curve to divide, then select bounding objects. Finally, you must select an appropriate intersection point where the bounding object and the curve intersect. The computer will find the exact point of intersection and divide the curve there. You can use multiple bounding objects during the same command to split the curve into more than two pieces. The third option for dividing curves is to input arc lengths of the segments. For this option, you must first select the cur curve you wish to divide, and then simply specify the length of the divided curves. In this command, the last curve will simply be as long as the remainder of the divisions. Division will start from the end closest to the pick point. The last two options, dividing a curve at knot points and at corner, are used for dividing splines, which will be discussed in a later time.